thinking of sailing around Britain but don't like the idea of long passages or sailing overnight, I sailed around Britain single-handed in manageable day sails in a 32-foot westerly fulmar. As a result, I visited some wonderful harbours and anchorages. In this short video, I'll show you some of the stopover places I used and the approaches to some of them, including some that are quite narrow. I was single-handed and none of them were overly difficult with proper planning of weather and tide. I departed from the ex estuary in Devon in April 2021, going anti-clockwise. Opinion on direction is divided, but honestly, there is no absolute right or wrong. Going east, I anchored first in Poole Harbour behind Brownsea Island and then stopped at Lymington, Buckless Hard in the Bewley River and Gosport, waiting for fair winds to help me on my way. From there, it was Littlehampton to New Haven, as Brighton and Eastbourne were both closed due to Covid restrictions. Both Littlehampton and New Haven were easy ports to enter, as were Dover and Ramsgate. Crossing the Thames was made easy using this book. Passing through the wind farm at Fulgur's Gat was delightful. After an eight hour crossing, I entered Harwich using the small boat channel and tied up on the very convenient Hapney Pier. Low stuff port control were very friendly and there was an easy entry to the Royal Norfolk and Suffolk Yacht Club. Although I didn't stay all through the night, I did make some very early starts. Don't miss out on Wells Next the Sea. There's a very helpful harbour master and there is drone footage on their website of the entrance so you can rehearse your entry many times before getting there. Grimsby Harbour entrance is wide, but the entrance route needs careful planning. And for VTS, you need to use channel 14 to the Meridian, then 12, and finally 74 into the Marina. And they're not very pleased if you get it wrong. I was heading for Bridlington, but continued to Scarborough, which was the first of my narrow entrances. But as you can see, there is space enough, but beware of the drying ledge alongside the pier. Whitby is no problem in reasonable conditions. but you do need to check the bridge opening times and call ahead. The Tyne entrance is open and Royal Quays Marina was very welcoming. I had help taking my line in their entrance lock and on the finger berth. Amble was lumpy at the entrance, but there is ample space for an entry and it's spacious inside, but keep to the wall on the port hand side, but watch out for fishing line. I had settled weather passing the Farne Islands and was fortunate to be able to spend a couple of nights in this special place, but follow the advice and have a tripping line on your anchor. Then was on to Eyemouth, another narrow entrance requiring careful navigation and reasonably settled weather. It can get rather boisterous around the rocky southern border to the entrance. Our broth, as you will see, is not too difficult, but the outer harbour dries and so you need to time your arrival to enter the inner harbour over the sill. Stonehaven is an alternative for tying up alongside if you have calm conditions. 
Then I had my longest passage yet from Arbroath to Peterhead, 73 nautical miles sailed, leaving at the crack of dawn. But Peterhead Harbour is massive, so great to enter with space to deploy lines and fenders and find the marina entrance which is well protected. I turned left into the Moray Firth. And then we get to what I consider to be the friendliest harbour of my whole circumnavigation, White Hills. Bertie the harbour master was waiting on the pier and took photos as I came in, directed me to my berth and took my line. There is a sharp turn to port, then starboard, then port again if you're directed to the inner harbour which has the greatest protection. Then the last of this series of narrow harbour entrances at Lossiemouth, before my arrival at Inverness. This was where I waited for my wife to arrive and accompany me through the Caledonian Canal. You can see short and long versions of the wonderful transit through the canal in videos I have made as flagged above. We exited the canal at Fort William and tied up on the short-term pontoon there. Before turning south, I spent 10 days exploring the Western Isles, returning eventually to Carrera Marina at Oban. From Oban, I sailed to Dura and anchored in West Loch Tarbert with the stunning backdrop of the Paps of Dura. Port Ellen was my jumping off point from Scotland, a small but excellent marina with three major distilleries within a short walk. Heading south, I visited Ballycastle, which was close to all amenities, and I made a bus trip to the giant causeway. From there, I made for Bangor. It seemed a long time since I had been in such a large, well-provided marina. Accessibility was good, and I was able to set fenders and lines mostly inside the marina. The marina at Ardlas was small, and this is largely a fishing port, but entrance and facilities there were fine. I was constrained by Covid restrictions in regard to my return options. I made for the Isle of Man, which I was pleased to visit, but had to make my entry in Douglas to get entry clearance from their border force. I waited to enter over the sill and went alongside a wall as they were dredging the area around the visitor's pontoon. Hollyhead Marina was still undeveloped after the storm damage many years ago, but the sailing club have a number of mooring buoys for visitors, shore access by dinghy or their club launch when it's available. I then went to the Llyn Peninsula and anchored just off Neffin and Morfa Neffin in calm conditions. I spent a couple of nights in Patheli Marina and topped up with diesel on their self-service fuel dock. Then we had a longish crossing, some 10 hours, of Cardigan Bay entering Fishguard and anchoring close to the Old Town Harbour. Milford Haven Marina is large and I just missed a lock-in, but there is a small waiting pontoon just outside. Dale at the entrance to the estuary was a far better place to stay if the wind is right and there is a small unattached pontoon, visitor boys or you can anchor in good holding. I stayed there one night before crossing to Padstow, another relatively long passage but leaving at dawn, I crossed the bar on the Camel Estuary on a rising tide and reached the harbour just five minutes before the gate to the inner harbour opened and tied up alongside the wall. New pontoons and improvements to the walls will make this even easier from 2023 onwards. Conditions now were very settled, so I was able to spend a comfortable night anchored just outside St Ives Harbour. The inner harbour has very firm sand and dries completely, and taking the ground there in even a minor swell 
is said to be somewhat uncomfortable. Passing around Land's End was not a problem, and in favourable winds and currents, I passed inside Longship's Lighthouse, around the Lizard, and into the Fal Estuary. There are lots of options here. I refuelled at Myla Yacht Harbour. They had no visitor spaces for me, so I anchored in one of my favourite spots in Channels Creek, underneath Trillisic House. I was now in very familiar territory and on my return I made stops at Sulcombe which has lots of options for anchoring or mooring and also in Dartmouth before returning to the X estuary. 